Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Kat here and welcome to this video. This video, as you can tell from the title, is talking about how I came to Japan and my life here. I first uh, came to Japan when uh, my friend that I made in where I was working in a hostel in Vancouver where I was visiting and living and working. I stayed there for a few months and I was working in this hostel and there were so many Japanese people that would come through that uh, I would know as soon as they handed me their passport because usually it's it was a red color but now I think they, they started doing the navy blue just like Canada. Uh, I think some people have that but a lot of them would have a red passport. I'd be like, ah, Nihonjin desu ka? And I'm like, that's, are you Japanese? <laughs> and they're like, ah, <laughs> how did you know? Uh, so I made a lot of Japanese friends at that time and a lot of them obviously just came, worked for a few months to a year and would be leaving and I only just met them like maybe toward the end of their visa stay pretty much. So I, one of my really good friends went back home and I wanted to see him again because he was like my best friend for drinking and hanging out and he was really cool. So. He was like very similar to me in energy and yeah, so we were, we were really good friends. And so I went back, but he lived in Miyazaki, so I couldn't go there, so I went to Tokyo. So I went to Tokyo mainly just for that. So I thought to myself, maybe I can do a work for stay in Japan where I can go to a hostel, work for my stay, and then I don't have to pay any money for my stay while I am there for the three months. So that was my first visa. I worked in a hostel. It's now closed. It was called uh, Kaosan Tokyo Ninja. And it's closed down, which is sad because I went back. I wanted to show this girls. Uh, I wanted to show my husband where I worked, but now it's gone. I think it might have been replaced by car parking or another building, but I think it's car parking. And I was so sad because I was like, I remember that place right across the street, but it's gone. <laughs> I was so sad. So yeah, I, I stayed there for September to December of 2010. And then I had to go home, obviously. I couldn't stay. I did travel to Taiwan uh, during that time in December and then I went back home after a little while after I went to Japan and then back home. Then I stayed in Canada for a few more months. I met somebody, uh, he was Japanese, uh, we started dating in the same hostel that I worked in. I kind of worked again but not really, it was kind of on and off whenever uh, I was needed kind of thing but I wasn't really needed that much as he had already staff but if they couldn't work or something, can I can you help me? <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> so I ended up traveling with him across Canada. We went to Lake Louise and then Canmore. Uh, we worked in, before Lake Louise, we worked in, I worked in Kelowna, BC on a cherry farm with him and I was up all night trying to find a job that time so it was just uh, I hope I find something for the both of us. So we worked uh, sorting cherries kind of thing and that was an interesting experience. Then we worked in a hostel in Banff, uh, not Banff, Lake Louise. Then we went across country back to, uh, to my home in St. John's, Newfoundland and he met my family. I stayed there for a few more months. Uh, he couldn't find a job so uh, we were staying at my mom's. I was able to find a, a job for the winter which helped us through the few months we were there and yeah I just worked at Dollarama which if anyone knows is uh, it's a dollar store so yeah, I worked there for the holidays, the holiday period, and then we went back to Vancouver. And then I ended up back, uh, no, we went to San Francisco and LA, then Thailand, and then back to Japan. Um, I thought that maybe we would get married, but obviously that didn't happen. And we were better off as friends anyway. So I ended up going to Australia and worked there for almost a year, went back to Japan to try and find a job again and I stayed here for another three months and then I went to Korea for the first time, had my wallet stolen, well not my wallet, my passport 
and my money stolen that I had saved in Australia. So I was stuck and stranded in Korea. I got help from the government thankfully and then I was able to go home, directly home, instead of going to Vancouver again I went back home because I was really depressed at that time. It would have been cheaper to go back to Vancouver for the flight but I, I was really depressed. I didn't want it to go back to Vancouver where I'll probably just go back to the hostel and then you know wish that I could go back to Japan but it was so difficult for me to get there and then so I stayed at home until 2019 pretty much uh, but between 2018 and 2019 no no before that uh, 2017 I think or the end of 2016 into yeah end of 2016 into 2017 I finally got my high school I never got my high school because I had to help kind of at home with my mom and it was it sucked like I I wanted to go to school to finish it and get my diploma but I finally did get the chance to go to an adult learning air center pretty much so it was uh, provided I didn't have to pay anything and I was able to get my uh, high school equivalency within less than a year and that was great I, it was like a school type setting and it was really good structure so uh, after that um, the reason why I did that was because I was planning to go back to Vancouver get uh, a flagging course done uh, work for that because it was a really high pay and I did do that but I'll talk about that in a minute I worked for uh, yeah, I would work for them it was like 25 to 27 dollars an hour so I would work for I'd say a year or two to save up enough money to go to school in Japan so for a language school and that also meant that I would have to uh, work the 28 hours to continuously put back the money that uh, they take out every month or so so then when I finished my language school I would have the same amount of money to go into a college so a Japanese college pretty much I wanted to do college I didn't want to do university I just wanted to do like something like computer related college get get a job after that in a normal Japanese job that was the plan <laughs> so change of scenery my camera shut off so I have to redo uh, what I was talking about so as I was saying we well I was planning to go to school in Japan for language school and then college that was the plan but as I was going through the motions of that plan I met somebody online and we started talking and we talked for about two and a half years so we talked for yeah two and a half years we both were talking to yeah get to know one another on a personal level because we were looking for a marriage partner not we're not looking just to date casually and see how things go we were you know trying to really get to know one another as people before we ever decided on it but as we were talking i think a year and a half in uh, i thought to myself i think this might be the right person for me and so that's why it kept going so long because I ended up going from Vancouver, I had to go back home, and then I left again for 2019, no, 2000, end of 2018 into, into 2019. Gotta love helicopters. So I was working as a flagger, but we had hit a insane polar vortex that was going further south than normal. And I don't think, unless you've been to Vancouver, you would know uh, they do have the warmest winters in Canada. Uh, there will be snow maybe for a few days of the year, but it's usually there for a day or two and it's gone. Most winters I've spent there, it was short, a few days of snow, I cried during those days, and it's done. Done and over with. So, that year it was so much more colder and so the amount of jobs and work going out for flaggers because it was too cold to work in for that time they were a lot less so the people it was kind of like a hierarchy because the people who were there longer would get like the first kind of call out because they're seasoned they know them and so rookies like me the ones who are new at it and need a little bit of extra help on site 
learning things they are kind of put on the back end so they would be called last for the other jobs and if there was jobs like i would call every day in the morning and they would be like i will call you later on today if there's something for tomorrow or something comes up in an hour or so we'll call you and then you can just go to the site i didn't get as much work as i hoped so i thought it would be the perfect time to meet him i left in it was in March. March and then I stayed until June. When I got there he met me at the airport which was nice. He took five days off work for just to be able to hang out with me. And that was so sweet of him to be able to take off work so then he can just you know spend time with me because his job is very long hours and it's hard to get very much talk time when he's gone at work for so long. So we we went to our first place we went for as a date was at the airport and we had matcha uh i had an iced matcha latte i think he had the same i think i believe he had the same and this was in haneda airport we went back to his new place which he got he left his old one bedroom and moved into a two bedroom which was going to give me privacy i'm not that weirded out when i'm staying with you know people I don't know because I would always when I traveled I always stayed in hostels. Hostels is what I always stayed in because they're cheap and you're able to enjoy yourself more when you're traveling. You don't have to worry about $100 or even like the lowest cost $90 a night. I could enjoy myself more when I do travel so I always go for hostels. And so I was fine sharing the second bedroom uh, and he would have the, his bedroom so we were completely separated and so I knew he was very gentlemanly for doing that because uh, most other guys would be like, oh yeah, we're sleeping in the same room. <laughs> I was like, eh, 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 no. Uh, so moved very slow. We got to go uh, after our first Hanami. Afterwards was Golden Week and we went to meet his mom. And then I stayed with him until June. Then I went to, by that time we decided to ourselves, we definitely matched as well in person as we did through the <laughs> video screen pretty much so we were like yeah i think this is working out really well you you're exactly how i thought and i think this would work so yeah we were we thought let's get married and so i went to uh, to korea for three weeks to wait for him to have uh, a few days holiday so uh, he could go to my home so when i left korea I went to Anarita airport and he was already there waiting for me and then we got the same flights together to St. John's Newfoundland pretty much so he had it all planned out so then we would be able to go there and we stayed there only three days and plus the two days of travel because it's like about 15 hours or more and two flights so it was really hard to just travel wise and even the last night there we uh, left home the night before uh, we were supposed to leave and we stayed in a hotel next to the airport because he didn't want to m miss the <laughs> flight back home because what if so the taxi cab driver doesn't come at the right time so yeah that's what happened and then when we, when we got back uh, we started uh, the we got a lawyer to help us through the process of uh, getting married in our spouse visa uh, so we got married on the last lucky day of July which was July 26 and in Japan they have lucky and unlucky days especially for marriage and other other occurrences so you're gonna find a lucky day to do something on so a lot of people will do stuff big things on those days and so since uh, there is those lucky days uh, we decided to get married then we went to City Hall signed out the paperwork we had all everything that we needed and then we just submitted everything to show that we were to get to getting to know one another for years um, he had kept his original phone which had all of our chat record so he would just share how long we were talking to one another some screenshots of us chatting on video because we were getting serious about like we might possibly get married so he took screenshots as kind of like to show this is our proof we have been getting to know one another for a long time so this wasn't just someone we just met like a week ago kind of thing and so we went through all of that it got approved thankfully and then last year I 
updated my visa which was so much easier. This year, my second year of applying, I thought I wouldn't get the three-year visa but I did which is amazing because I know someone who was pregnant and she didn't even get her three-year visa and she was pregnant with a Japanese national so it was weird that I got it. I was just lucky I guess I got the three-year visa so uh, after I got that visa I was like yes I told my husband I was like yeah this week I, I, we got the three-year and then I went to the information booth and they said uh, I asked to get the paperwork for permanent residency and she explained everything about it and she asked when I got married so then I said it was in July 26 of so 2019 she said okay so the best thing to do is on that date <laughs> or the day after or around that date but it has to be after um, you can apply for permanent residency at three years of marriage and so I am going to be applying for that in July next July and let's hope I get it let's all hope and pray I get it because getting visas is so annoying and I know I'm going to be staying here this is where I'm going to be living out my life and obviously I'll be going back home and traveling around but I don't want to have to deal with the stress of uh, when I go I have to be back by a certain time or you know something might go off and I have to go through the immigration uh, not through the once you get a permanent residency, you don't have to go th through the gates with the foreigners. You go through the Japanese uh, gate entry with your resident permanent resident card, pretty much. And it, that's it. And the only thing you have to do is just update it every 10 years, which is great. So yeah, that's my story. That's how we met. We ended up uh, after uh, a few months after, around I think no November, just around my birthday, end of my birthday, uh, maybe the middle of the month, I forgot, <laughs> but we moved to this apartment here and the main reason was because I wanted to A, get out of Tokyo, I don't like Tokyo, I like it for like hanging out for, you know, friends or stuff like that, but I don't like living in it, it's just too much. So we decided to move here to southern Kanagawa and we got a bigger place that allows I was able to adopt two cats uh they were sisters uh I was looking at on Facebook uh it was Japan Cat Network if you're looking to adopt in Japan go for them or Kawakuji Animal Rescue and there's also one in Yokosuka Yokosuka Animal Rescue or something like that you'll just google it you'll find it uh, those are the the best ways to get it and they're sisters they both came with uh the white calico uh, her name was cappuccino and the black tortoiseshell was called w which is you know double uh espresso kind of drink which i was like drawn to them because of their name and i was looking at them a few months before when they had uh, a siamese and i really wanted to get the siamese cat with uh, the calico and someone obviously adopted th that one first so uh, I was lucky that they still had two there and yeah we did all sorts of you know talking with the the organizer a leader of the group uh, through Skype and I went over how much experience I am with cats if anything happened they would come back with me uh, you have to make sure to you know to show to them that no matter what's going to happen you're not going to abandon them or if something did happen you give them back to them but they're my babies and to me my my kitties would always be my babies even when they're adults now I still call them my babies so yeah we adopted them in December I think it was December 7th and now they're over a year old and now they're no longer my babies but I still call them that <laughs> they're my uh, I changed their names because their personality is really came through when they finally came out of their bubble when they weren't so scared. Cappuccino was very much protective of Dapio. So I called Cappuccino Aria. <laughs> Aria, she was a protector of her sister. So she was just like any noise or something she didn't know what was going on. She would poof up her tail and like, you know, hunt her back up like I'm going to attack kind of thing. I'll protect my sister. And Sansa was the next name for Dapio. So I called her Sansa because she was a very ladylike girl who would sit properly and also it was very needy and annoying because <laughs> she talks so much which I, I'm used to now but it's other people might find it annoying but just like how Sansa was in the first season she is that's how I got Sansa so they're sisters and they're both 
Arya and Sansa. So yeah, that's how I met my husband, that's how I ended up in Japan, and my Japan story pretty much. And if you have any other questions or comments, you know, please leave them down below. I love to read them, I love getting them, and I love replying to them. If I got a flood of <laughs> comments, uh, I'll get to everyone I can. So thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you much for your time, and I hope you have a great one. See you next time.